everybody, welcome back to Real Good Pilates. I'm Michelle, and today I have for you a full body Pilates reformer workout using a maple pole as our prop. So typically reformers will come with something like this. I hope yours did. Uh, if not, you can buy them separately. So we are gonna get started. We're not gonna use this the whole time, uh, just for some arm rowing a little bit later. So just have it close by and then get your machine set up how you like it for footwork. Place on your desired springs for two legs pressing. I'm gonna do two reds and one blue spring. So two heavy and one medium. You can do more or less than that. And we're gonna start lying on our backs. So you can have your headrest up or down. We're going to start with our legs all the way together, separate them if that's uncomfortable. You're going to wrap your toes around the foot bar and just relax your heels towards the floor. So let's just take a couple of breaths here before we start moving. So breathe in through your nose, really expanding your rib cage. And then as you exhale, feel your abdominals drawing in towards your belly button. Yeah, let's do that two more times. As we're breathing here, try to settle into your neutral, just kind of letting gravity press you into the carriage. One last time, breathing in and breathing out. Feel heavy through your tailbone, your ribs, and the back of your head. Now this time as we take a big breath in, we're gonna use our exhale now to push off of the bar. So we kind of stretch out the backs of the legs the whole time. So heels are heavy, that Achilles tendon is nice and long. Good, and we're just trying to get moving here. So don't, no need to move a certain speed. Just kind of listen to your body. It's a good time to see if you like the spring choices you've made and change them if you need to. Very good. Now if your legs are together, really feel them actively pressing into one another. So the inner thighs are active. Very good. Let's do three more here, leaving that tail heavy on the mat. Good. Now last one, come into the bottom. Very good. Now go to your heels on the bar, externally rotate and make a V, knees matching over toes. So once you've found that 45 degrees of turnout, you're going to press out and in just like before. Good. So it's maybe a little different sensation being on our heels. Yeah, we can connect to the backs of the legs a little bit better. Good, and as we're moving here, whenever you think about it, kind of come back to that breath that we practiced initially. So that's a good way to really get some nice oxygen in and relax so that we're not holding on to tension. Good, let's do two more presses. Now this time let's come into the bottom and stay just before you hit the stopper of your carriage. Now take some little tiny pulses back and forth, just breathing smoothly all throughout. Very good, starts to feel pretty difficult. The more we do, let's do three or four more. Three, two, now push all the way out and then come down to the bottom. Very good. Now keep that V with your legs and move to the balls of your feet. Elevate your heels up and then we'll go same breath as before. Exhale to straighten the legs. Inhale on the return. Good. If you happen to notice, if it feels like your shoulders are caving forward or you feel kind of tight in the front of your chest, feel free to try turning your palms to look up at the ceiling. It's kind of a little trick to try to open the collarbones so we're not gripping. Feels kind of good. Yeah, let's do three more here. Now this time, on our last repetition, we're gonna stay out with straight legs. So pause here. Now we're gonna pulse at the top end of our range of motion. So bend your knees slightly and push back to straight. In and push, in and push. Yeah, so the emphasis is on the knees getting back to straight and the squeezing of the quads. Now let's see if we can speed this up a little bit. Feel like you're pulsing up up like there was a little bell at the top of your machine and you would just kind of ding into it every time. Three, two, one, and then come down to the bottom. Whew. 
Very good. All right, let's go back to our heels. Go to a wide second position with parallel legs. So knees and toes point to the ceiling as wide apart with your feet as you would like. Flex your ankles and then press on out and return. Good, so now the legs are starting to warm up a little bit more. Get nice and deep into that flex at the hips. Very good. Nice, try to keep it nice and continuous so you don't feel like you ever get stuck at the top or at the bottom. All right, last three, last two. Good, now come down and stay. Hold your deep squat and we're just gonna hold here. No pulsing, we're gonna breathe in and out. Good, let's hold here for two more rounds of your breath. Settle in through your tail and just feel those thighs start to burn up a little bit. Good, take one more deep breath in and out and then we'll finish by straightening one last time and then bring yourself down. Ooh. It's almost harder than the pulses. <laughs> Good. So bring your legs back together, whether that's touching or slightly apart, and go up onto the balls of your feet. So a high half toe position. Now this time, let's exhale to get ready. Connect to your abdominals. Now as you inhale, straighten your legs and hold. Now breathe out and take a little calf stretch so let the heels release under the bar, lift back up, and then bend the knees. And we'll do that again. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good. So reversing the breath is kind of a good challenge just for our brains and our coordination. And it also allows us to breathe out when we get this nice calf stretch with the heels dropping. So kind of a good, good way to change it up a little bit. Good, let's take a couple more here. See if every time the heels drop, you can get a little extra range. Yes, make sure the legs aren't separating in order to reach the heels further. You wanna keep that connection. Very good. Now after this last calf raise, let's hold ourselves out here and just start to kind of prance through your feet, lifting one heel up and stretching the other beneath. Good, so now the full tension of the springs gets to pull on that single heel. So we get a little more depth to our calf stretch. Very good. Now drop both heels and just stay here for a breath or two, letting those springs draw you further under the bar. Good, now to finish, pick the heels back up and then come down to the bottom. Very good. All right, let's come up off our backs. So roll to your side to come on up. Okay, so now we're gonna use our maple pole to do some arm rowing. So grab it and then reduce your springs down. I'm gonna do a single red, so see if that works for you. We're gonna be facing the foot bar, doing some front rowing. So for the sitting position, you can either sit with your legs fully outstretched, if that's not too uncomfortable around your hips or your hamstrings, that's option one. Number two, you can sit crisscrossed, which is a little bit more comfortable through the hips, or you could even hang your feet off to the sides or even sit up on a box. Okay, so you do what works best for you. I'm gonna go legs outstretched. To set this up, you're gonna grab your straps. If you have a choice of loops, take the shorter of the two loops. You're gonna pull both of the straps forward and just loop them on either end of your stick, just slightly wider than your torso so that it's the ropes aren't touching your body, okay? Now, we're gonna hold on to the outsides of the straps. You can kind of secure with your thumb so they don't move in an overhanded grip. All right, now sitting up as tall as you can, you're gonna bring the stick forward so it's just in front of your ribs without touching you. And then just take a couple of chest presses forward and back. So we're exhaling to reach, inhale to return. This is much harder than it looks. Yes, we have the pull coming from behind us. So we're constantly fighting to keep this tall posture. So if you need to change your leg position, it's all good. 
All right, now we're gonna straighten the arms and pause. Lock the shoulders in place. Now we're gonna use the abdominals to push even further and see how far you can fold over your legs. Keep the stick raised. Retract to sit back up and bend your elbows. Do that again. So I reach the arms out, I spread my shoulder blades apart and round forward. Now I don't wanna flatten and touch my legs. I wanna hover just above and then come back a couple more times. Reach, draw the abdominals back as the arms press away. Return up tall and then bend. So good, let's do that a couple more times. Really feel that opposition of the reach of the arms and the pulling in of the abdominals. Good. Now the next time you fold over, let's stay here. Bend the elbows and bring the bar as close to your hips as you can and then push back forward. So I bend and then I press. And it just depends on how far you're folded, how much space there is between your chest and your legs. It's okay if the bar just comes to your shoulders or if you like, you can bring it more towards your hips. You decide. Let's do three more. That's not easy to hold this position. Two. On your last one, pause with those long arms. Sit back up tall and then rest the stick across your lap. Very good. All right, now we're gonna get the spine moving side to side a little bit. So you can keep your same position with your legs or switch it up. Bring the stick back to that same start position. Now leave your elbows bent, keep the tension on the ropes, and you're just gonna breathe in and side bend. Shoulder gets closer to hip, and then come back up tall. Other side, over and then lift. So you're staying heavy on both sitting bones, kind of cinching up one waistline as you stretch out the other. Yes, and the rope should stay pretty tight, keeping the pressure with the hands. All right, now we're gonna add on a little bit of a pattern. So let's side bend to the right. So the left side of the stick is higher. Now straighten your arms, leave them straight, rotate to the other side. So now my right arm is higher and then I bend my elbows. Now stay side bent to the left and start again. I straighten my arms. I kind of draw a rainbow up and over to switch my side bends and then bend the elbows. Good, a few more times. One, up and over to switch two and then bend three. Good, now you might notice when you switch side bends, one rope kind of goes slack and that's okay. That's totally fine. As long as you're kind of holding it with your thumb, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, now if you wanna start to speed this up, so it's more of two movements, push and pull, changing side bends every time you come in with bent elbows. There we go, try to make it fluid. Now that we've got the pattern, we don't have to think so hard about it. Let's do two more. Last one. Good, now just reach to the front and bring the stick to your lap. Whew. Okay, it's kind of a brain teaser. So next we need to change our arms a little bit. So let the stick go on your lap, let go. Now you're gonna take your hands and you're gonna sneak them inside of the straps, reach underneath and grab on on the outside again. But now when you lift your arms, the rope should go over top of your shoulders, okay? Now maybe bring the straps in just a little bit narrower. Sit up as tall as you can with your elbows bent. Now take the stick behind your head. If your ribs overly pop, you've gone too far. So find where you can sustain your position here. Now we're just gonna do some tricep presses up on the diagonal. Now if sitting up perfectly straight is way too uncomfortable, you can lean on a slight diagonal. Also crisscrossing the legs will be a lot less uh, challenging on the hip flexors, okay? But the more vertical you are, the more we're challenging the abdominals. Inhale, bend, exhale, reach. And the bar will just kind of spin within the strap 
making this pretty smooth and nice. You can keep your wrists in a nice neutral position. All right, now kind of like with our chest presses, we're gonna add a forward fold. So once your arms reach on the diagonal, we stay. Now, exhale, I'm gonna curl over my legs. The ropes will just drape on my shoulders. I sit back up tall and bend the elbows. Do that again, stretch. I fold, 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 lift up tall, get as upright as possible, and then bend. Yes, and you wanna have the elbows tucked in narrow right next to your temples. That's what's gonna target those triceps. So good, you guys, couple more times. You can smooth that together however feels good. With this one, you might find you can get more of a stretch and let yourself get closer to your legs. So with the position of the ropes, that's more doable here. Let's do two more. So see if you can curl and touch your nose to the knees, maybe, if it's a good day. Last one. Whew. Okay, now to come out of this, bend your elbows and kind of shimmy your shoulders through the ropes. Let the stick go across your lap. Whew. And then take the straps off and hang them up. Very good, you guys. Okay, so that was some front rowing with the help of the stick. Now we're gonna do some back rowing. So working the opposite side of the body. Welcome to keep the same springs. Let's take a seat with our feet on the headrest, knees bent, and we're gonna loop the stick exactly how we had it before through your shortest loop. Okay, we are gonna work on a bicep curl action with the arms while we roll through some flexion and extension of the spine. So it's gonna be a really good kind of full integration of the upper body. So with your knees bent, you wanna make sure that you have quite a bit of space behind you on the carriage, at least enough so that if you rolled halfway back, you wouldn't be hanging off. And then one more thing, which I forgot to mention, let's put our foot bars down. It might not matter, but it might be kind of nice to have that out of our way, okay? So back where we were, legs all the way together, hold back outside of the straps, secure them with your fingers if you like. All right, now we're gonna reach our arms out, sit up as tall as is comfortable. You're gonna curl the stick towards your shoulders, scoop your belly under and roll back as far as you're comfortable with and then come back up tall. So your sacrum can be on the carriage. Don't go till your low back touches, just for what we're gonna do next. Kind of keep it in the pelvis, touching the mat, okay? So really flexing that elbow and coordinating it with the scoop of the tailbone. All right, now set your stick up right next to your collarbone. Now, once we're here, we're gonna hold the stick. You're gonna lift your chest up, extend your sternum to the ceiling, nod your chin to curl, and then sit back up tall. And do that again, roll back and hold. Lift the chest and open. My spine lengthens, try not to let your low back do so much, mostly the upper spine. Yeah, it'll change a little bit. We don't wanna arch it all that much. Whew and then lift. Let's do two more times. Now this is gonna make our neck muscles work. Fair warning, but that's okay. And then up one more time. So we're isolating the flexion, then the extension, come back to flexion, and then up. I lied, let's do one more. I think we need one more. Roll back, lift your heart. The stick elevates an inch or two. We round and then sit up and take a breather. Okay, very nice. Next, we're gonna add an overhead reach in that extension. If you don't feel stable with your spine extended, you can do more of a flat back instead of letting the head drop so far. So here we go, inhale to get ready. Exhale, we bicep curl and pull. Now as I extend the spine, I also extend the arms, nod the chin, and then sit back up. Do that again, scoop, extend, curl, and lift, four movements, four breaths. So good, by tying the breath to it, it forces us to slow down. Yes, we can't rush through the movement, otherwise we'd be hyperventilating. Let's do one more, slowing it down, spending lots of time, and sit up tall. 
Ooh, okay, we are gonna take that same sequence and advance it a little bit by changing our position. So leave the feet where they are, scooch as far forward as physically possible. And it's okay if your kind of backs of your thighs are touching the shoulder rests. If your shoulder rests come off, you could even remove them if you wanted. So we're gonna grab back on in our same grip. The reason we've scooted so far forward is so that we have the maximum amount of carriage behind us, okay? Because if you can see where I'm going, we're gonna roll all the way back onto the mat now. So my knees are together. I raise the arms up. They don't have to be all the way straight. We're gonna curl back. Now this time I allow my whole lower back to find the carriage. I extend and reach back exactly like before. Nod the chin, bend the elbows, imprint your spine into the carriage and sit up. It's kind of fun, right? It kind of works all together. So it's all the same mechanics as before. We've just flipped our orientation, reach back, curl and lift. Yes, the extension comes a little bit easier now because we've got gravity helping us to just lay back, curl and return. Okay. If this is working for you and you don't need to challenge anymore, stay with the feet down. But if you're ready, we're gonna take the feet up to tabletop. You could also do this with just a single leg. So roll back a little bit first, secure the straps, lift your other leg up. Now, scoop your belly button back, make your lumbar spine touch the carriage. Now, once you're here, everything else is the same. The legs stay tabletop. I nod the chin, come back up very slowly to end up just behind your sitting bones. And we do that again. Roll the spine, that's what starts it. Reach back, nod the chin, and come up. Whew. Okay, let's do this one more time. Scoop under, the slower the better. Let the head and chest reach and then return. Okay, last but not least, if you'd like, we're gonna try this with straight legs. You can either straighten the legs just when we reach the arms and then bend them again or leave your legs straight the whole time, okay? I'll show a couple of each or maybe one of the bent version and then straight for the rest. So if you're just straightening your legs for half the time, we roll back just like we did. The knees reach out, the feet go forward. Now bend the elbows and the knees together and then come back up. Now, if you wanna keep the legs straight, it's much harder even in this start position to not fall over. We scoop under, the legs don't have to be very low. Just a slight diagonal, scoop, scoop, scoop. And then the trick is to come up without falling forward. Whew, a couple more times. Scoop and roll, reach and lengthen, nod the chin, and then lift. So good, let's do two more. If your feet need to touch the headrest at the top, it's all good. Just reset and start again. Tuck, feel that length at the front of the body, curl and return. Last time, tuck and roll. Who you can even support the backs of the legs oh, on the shoulder rests. Oh, that's not easy. Oh, and then come all the way up. Well done. Okay, let's take our loops off of the stick. Whew. Very good. All right, set your stick off to the side. Next, we're gonna go into kind of a side body. Uh, series. So we're going to start working the outer thighs and then we'll do some stuff for our spine as well. So let's bring our foot bars back up. Keep your one red spring on. Come up to kneeling. You're going to have your nearest leg, whichever way you're facing, whichever one is closest to the shoulder rests, that shin is going to go right up against them and your other foot is going to go on the floor. If your machine is elevated up higher than mine, this will still work. The angle will just be different. You could also put your foot on a box on the floor, okay? So we come up nice and tall. This foot can kind of move around to adjust the range, all right? Start with it kind of right under your knee. We're gonna use this outer thigh to glide the carriage out, and then we sink into a little hip stretch as far as we can. You can let the arms raise, and then just glide your carriage in and restack. So hip and knee are in line, and then we shove the knee out from under us, and then come back. 
So it's kind of double duty. We get a stretch for the insides and the backs of the legs, and then work on the sides of the hips to push into the spring tension. Yeah, and then just allow those arms to float up in whatever way feels good. Now, if you move the foot more across your midline, the springs will feel heavier when you get to that end range. And then if you move your foot further this way, it'll be lighter and less tension. So let's do a couple more once you've chosen your kind of sweet spot with that bottom foot. Last two. Now on your last one, stay out and hold. I want you to put your hand that's next to the foot on the floor. That hand's gonna go on your thigh. Now, you're gonna bring the carriage under you, side bend and reach the top arm over and then glide back out. So kind of same arm and leg are pulling into this side stretch and then away. So good, keep that same leg action as we move the carriage. We're just incorporating the spine. Very good, make sure you're not relaxing the abdominals and sticking your tail out. You wanna keep this nice and short and contained. Let's do two more. Ooh, feels so nice. Last one. Very good, all right, bring yourself in. Next, we're gonna bring both knees up on the carriage. If you need pads under your knees, you're welcome to do that. You're gonna bring your knees together and be a little bit away from the shoulder rests. Now, put your closest hand on the foot bar and lean over. So we're gonna do a little bit of a star prep. So you get your body into a diagonal line, your knees squeeze together, and your top knee is off of the carriage so that you can be in this long line. Now, the other arm goes on our side. You're gonna push away, open the top arm till it matches the bottom one, and then come back. So it's not a massive movement. It's just a little push from the shoulder, and then back. Inhale out, exhale in. So the main mover is that bottom shoulder. Yes, pushing from the deltoids and then pulling from the underarm. All right, now we're gonna add a little bit more spinal movement to this. Push out and stay. Now, you're gonna side bend, put your top knee on the mat and fold the top arm over. Very similar to what we just did kneeling. And then go back to your long side plank. Up, hopefully, maybe, both your kneecaps touch. Now, I use this top waistline to shorten and push away. Yeah, so it's more the bottom side of the waist that pulls you in, the top side pushes you out, and the shoulder is stable. Let's do that two more times. Inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, and then exhale and glide the carriage in. All right, last but not least, we're gonna try this in a full true side plank. If you need to repeat on your knees, you do that. You can do this with either staggered legs, one against either shoulder rest, or both ankles kind of in the middle in between. I'm gonna do the stacked feet together version. So take your, it's probably easiest to maybe stand up first, take your bottom foot and kind of put your toes on the front shoulder rest, heels near the back one, stack your ankles together and open your body long. Okay, now just like before, do a couple of test presses, okay, out and in, it's the same mechanics. If it's already too hard, drop back to your knees. Now push out and stay. I'm gonna side bend just like before, drape the arm, lift the hips, and then go back to my long plank. I side bend and then I lower. Maybe the carriage will touch the stopper. Ooh, maybe not, <laughs> mine's not touching, but you can try. Up and over, chest open, last two. And last one. Okay, step a foot forward. Grab the bar and come down. Very nice. All right, turn around and we'll repeat that facing our new direction. So let's start with the one foot on the floor. So get your shin and your thigh against the shoulder block. Foot is turned out from the hip to go to the ground. Here we go. So exhale, Oop, gotta get my shin up against. Exhale, we glide out and open the arms and then return. 
So it's this nice combination of active stretch and then also strength. So we've got the spring tension. This quad is like the silent hero. You'll start feeling it in a minute. Very good. Notice if your ribs want to poke forward, they like to do that to try to give you more range, but it ends up kind of disconnecting our abdominals. Let's do two more and then we'll add our side bend. So pause in your open shape, place the hand on the thigh of the foot that's on the floor and we side bend over and then reach back out. I get taller to side bend and then long to open. Big stretch and then over. Good. Try to eke out as much length through those ribs as you can. Last two. And last one. Push back to the open lunge and then come in. All right, bring both your knees back up. Scooch a little away from your shoulder blocks. Knees together, tip over so the knees are stacked. Okay, you can roll your knuckles a little more forward on the foot bar to take the heat off your wrist. And then we start to push and pull. So good, it always helps to come back to your breath, kind of help center us Ooh, and slow us down a little. Okay, now let's push out and hold. You're gonna side bend, the carriage draws under you to stretch and then we push the knees back out to our diagonal. We fold and then push away. Fold, so now this shoulder that was the mover, it's the stabilizer and we're kind of wrapping ourselves towards it and away. Last time, find your long line and then pull your body back. Okay. Here we go. Now let's try that as a full side plank, which is not easy. So pick whether you'd like staggered legs or stacked. I'm gonna stack mine. So you kind of go on the side edge of your feet, stack the ankles. You can use two hands to find the position. All right, here we go. Do a couple of presses, and then we're gonna dive right in to our side bends. Yes, feel like your legs are fused together. Now press out and pause, and now we side bend up and over, and then lower down. That's it, a little less movement on the carriage this time, that's okay. Let the head tip, and down, two more. Last one, and then foot down and relax. Ooh. Very, very good. All right, roll your wrists out. We're gonna do one last thing up on our feet and then we're gonna get our feet in the straps. All right, so we're gonna do a little bit of an elephant series. So one red spring is still just great. Place both hands on the foot bar. Go up high on your heels, not too high, but a little high half toe. And then lean your weight back over your legs and round your back into a C curve. All right, now just take some very small little elephant stretches here to get us moving. So I inhale, open my hips, exhale, return. Good, not quite a full plank yet. We'll get there, but see if you can maintain this roundness in the back while finding length through the backs of the legs. Okay, now bring the carriage in. Now we're gonna end up in a full plank and articulate our spine to get out there. So my back is round. I start to push with my legs and I curl through my vertebrae, end up in a flat line. Now I nod my chin, round my spine and return. Do that again. My tailbone kind of leads me out and then I nod my chin and my head coming in is the leader. Okay, two more times. So getting this rolling kind of wave through the spine. 
All right, now we're gonna add on. Once we get into our plank, we're gonna hold, bend the knees to come in all the way till you touch the stopper, and then straighten your legs and round your back. And we go again, we curl out to our plank, bend the knees, get your weight back over your feet, and then don't move the carriage to straighten. Oh, and we end up round. <laughs> I almost forgot, lengthen, come in, and then up. Good, you can start to flow this smoothly together. Let's do one more, and then we're gonna reverse. So pausing with your long legs, back is rounded. I bend my knees first and roll to a flat back. I push my legs out, round my spine, and pull the feet under. So I go knees bent, look at the foot bar and push nod the chin, and roll to my elephant. One, two, and three. That's a lot of coordination. Bend, push, pull. Last time, in, out, up, and then come down one knee at a time. Ooh, that was not easy. Very well done. Okay, last thing, get your feet in the straps. You can do whatever springs you like. Two reds or a red and a blue. I'm gonna do two reds. If you can do two reds, maybe go with that one. Uh, it'll give us a little bit of support for one of the exercises. Okay, but you decide what's gonna work best. Okay, so feet in the loops one by one arms long, and then let's have our headrests down since we're gonna be rolling over here in a minute. So reach your legs long and parallel, heavy ribs. You're gonna bend into tabletop and push away. Nice and easy, inhale, bend your knees, exhale, lengthen. Very good, so now that we're back on our backs, so we can kind of come back to our breath, Oh, gonna center ourselves again after all that exciting movement we were doing. Okay, now bend your knees and hold. Spine is neutral. You're gonna reach your feet to the ceiling and then push your long legs away. So I bend, my thighs pretty much stay put. I reach and then lower. Bend, reach and push. It's kind of similar to those last little elephants that we were doing, kind of. It's just we're looking up at the ceiling now, but similar leg action. Good, now let's reverse it. So once we get down on the diagonal, we reverse. We lift to the ceiling, bend without letting the knees come towards the chest, and push away. Up, they don't get any closer, bend, and then push out. Good, that makes your glutes and the backs of your legs work a lot harder. One, two, and push. Okay, two more. Feel the ribs heavy down. Last time. Good, all right, now let's do that same movement but externally rotated. So turn out to a V, you're gonna bend like a frog. Let's do this one a couple times just to kinda get us in this lateral rotation, bend and stretch. Okay, now just like before, bend like a frog. Now reach to the ceiling, your inner thighs will come together, feet turned out, and then lower down. Again, bend, well your whole leg's turned out, but the feet make that V shape still, and lower. This is a lot more difficult. You'll feel those rotating muscles in the hip and your inner thighs. Whew. Big time, up and down. Okay, one more this way, bend. See those inseams get together. Whew. Okay, now reverse it. Lift up first, keep the pelvis stable as you bend and push away. We lift, we bend and push. Up, down, out, last time. Very good. 
Okay, now this is where we want those headrests down. We're gonna go into an inversion, okay? Let's go parallel with the legs. So we're gonna do this a little differently than we normally do. So I want you to hinge at your hips and just lift till your legs are vertical. Now here, the carriage isn't gonna move. I'm gonna tuck under and reach my feet up directly from where they started without the carriage moving under me. Now I roll back down through your imprint, find your neutral spine, and then push away. So this is the exercise where the heavier springs are helpful. Yes, the two reds. Ooh, if it was too light, it would be a little trickier to keep the machine from moving. Ooh, and then down. And then if it was too heavy, the reverse would be true. It would move the other way. So two reds is kind of the happy medium. Tuck under, we keep the spring tension from the glutes, chin off the chest, ooh, and then roll down and push away. All right, two more times. So tons of stability, and we hold that connection as we roll up and roll down and press. All right, last time, lift, scoop, hips open, and then lower. All right, grab the ropes, bend your knees, take your feet out one by one, and then come on up. All right, let's finish with a stretch. So back to our single red, and let's do a kneeling thigh stretch. So you can decide to do one foot up on the foot bar, that's a little more stretch, or down on your platform for a little bit less. So pick, pick what you'd like, kind of wrap your toes around the bar, come up tall, draw your abs up, and then we push away. Kicking off the front leg and pressing into the shoulder rest with the back. Good, exhale to push away. Inhale, return. Good, really seeing through the springs, let the weight of the head pull you towards the thigh. All right, two more. Okay, last time, make it your biggest one yet. Push those feet in opposition. Okay, bring that foot down, other side. Hey, even out the hips, inhale, get ready. Exhale to push, feel that back glute. And up, exhale. Very good, two more. Come up to a nice tall spine each time, really reset. So good, last one, biggest stretch yet. Ooh and come on down. With that, we are all done. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you liked that. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Leave me any feedback or uh, requests for future videos in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn all your notifications on, and please share this video with a friend, and I'll see you next time. Bye. It's kind of like a backwards teaser. Whew. Oh, my hair, oh, my hair's stuck in the springs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Ah. Good times. You did it. Way to go on completing today's workout. I hope you feel amazing. If you want to see even more from Real Good Pilates, click the link down below or right up here to head to my website and claim your seven day free trial for the Real Good Pilates on demand subscription platform where you'll find even more fun and challenging ways to work out with me that are all completely ad free plus tons of subscription exclusive workouts that you won't find anywhere else. So I hope you'll try it out and I can't wait for you to join me for even more Real Good Pilates. I'll see you over there, bye.